It's time to take a ride on the Steelers Afternoon Drive with our co-hosts, Alan Saunders and Zachary Smith. Welcome into another episode of Steelers Afternoon Drive. I'm Zachary Smith. That is Alan Saunders. Alan, as we are just days away from Steelers Ravens, we also sit just six subscribers away from 10,000 on the YouTube channel. What's going on? 9.99K is a good look. I, I'm enjoying that. <laughs> uh, yeah, man. Uh, Steelers Ravens feels almost like an afterthought for these Steelers, right? Like we've talked so much about what's wrong with the Steelers, what's been mm -hmm. going wrong with the Steelers. I don't feel like we've talked about this game that much this week. So I kind of want to rectify that today and, and talk about this matchup and what we think we're going to see on Sunday. We will spend quite a bit of today's episode doing just that. But first, I, we got to talk about Alex Highsmith, I feel like, who said he's going to play. He's been dealing with a groin injury since Wednesday, I guess, late in practice, maybe tweaked it, didn't practice yesterday. We had a conversation about him on here yesterday, wondering, you know, those midweek, late week injuries are kind of hard to gauge where he's going to be at. But sounds like he's going to play on Sunday. Yeah, uh, very interesting that Alex Highsmith said he got hurt in Wednesday's practice. What? What happened in Wednesday's practice again? That oh, the, the changes, the changes took place on Wednesday. Just throwing <laughs> that out there. I don't know. I know nothing. I'm just could have done it stepping off the sidewalk onto the field. I don't know. Just throwing that out there. Uh, interesting, interesting timing. Um, I think he's gonna play. He said he's gonna play, and I believe him, I guess. So officially listed as mm. questionable, but uh. Very limited in practice today. Didn't practice much at all yesterday. So we'll see if he's able to play and if he is able to play, whether he can be a full participant or not. You know, the good news there is that you feel good about the depth of that position, you know, for the first time in a long time with Marcus Golden yep. and Nick Herbig. You know, maybe not as good of run defenders as Highsmith is or has been. He's been so improved in that area this season. I think that's probably the thing that you lose in, in moving to Golden and 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 Herbig from him. But mm -hmm. you know, we'll see. If he can play 75% of his snaps, I think that's that's more than enough. Yeah, and, and I wanted to touch on that point that you brought up with Golden Herbig too. I just feel so much better about where they're at with the position this year as opposed to last year. With when TJ goes down, you got Malik Reed and Jameer Jones in those guys, you know, trying to fill that spot. And I just feel like they're better equipped right now to you know handle the absence of TJ or Alex should they have to. So uh, hopefully they don't have to on Sunday. But even if he does play, you could see it meaning more reps for those two guys, regardless. Also, weirdly, this game is like a battle of the backups, right? So the Ravens are uh, – Morgan Moses is doubtful mm. to play at tackle, yeah. and Ronnie Stanley is questionable. So the Ravens could be playing two backup tackles. The Steelers could have a backup edge rusher. The Steelers will be playing a backup left tackle. Broderick Jones is going to play for Dan Moore. And the Ravens are down their top three edge rushers. They don't have Tyus Bowser, and they don't have David Ojabo, who are both on the injured reserve list, and Odafe Owe has also been uh, ruled out for this game. So they're down to fourth and fifth options. I mean, Jadavian Clowney is a pretty solid fourth option. So like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not really uh, yeah. And I'm, I'm not saying they're going to be scrubby or anything like that, but it's definitely an area where uh, there could be some attrition involved. We could see a little bit of TJ Watt against Daniel Fa'alele, the gigantic second year guy mm. from Minnesota. If mm -hmm. you remember what TJ Watt did to Dewan Jones, I feel pretty good about that matchup. And so, yeah, it'd be interesting to see how all that plays out. Will Clowney play against Jones? I would assume, but I don't know. A uh, lot, lots to look look at there from a edge rusher and tackle standpoint on both of these teams. Yeah, and I just real quick before we get into this game, want to bring up Najee too being limited today. Although he doesn't have an injury designation, so obviously he's going to play. But you know what was that about? Was it actually just like a rest type thing? But they he's dealing with a little bit of something. I was weird. I don't situation. know because didn't talk to Najee today. But uh, you know, if I didn't know, I couldn't tell you. But um, yeah, it, I I don't know. I didn't see anything that looked like he was injured to me. So yeah, he's, he's going to play regardless. I just, I didn't yeah. know if maybe we do expect him to not be at full on Sunday or anything like that due to this, but when Najee was talking earlier this week, I think it's going to take like a 
a pack of wild That's dogs true. He yeah. pins from from going full in this one. Uh, he's been he's he's been ready to go since about Tuesday, I think. Monday, he still looked like he was feeling Sunday's game, but after that, he's he's been ready to go. Uh, mm -hmm. And DeMarvin Leal also will not play. That was kind of the big news of the day in terms of like what we actually found out for sure today about the Steelers. He's been in the concussion protocol. He was injured very late in that game against Houston. He is out, and that means you will see, unless they call somebody else up from the practice squad or something weird, Braden Fajoko dressed for this game. Uh, th that will be the, Yay. The, the, the change there. It's big time. changes, big changes. Uh, mm -hmm. So... We'll get some Braden Foco, and I would assume that means you will see more of Monty Adams and Keanu Benton playing the three and the five tech and not just the nose tackle because that's the only way it makes sense to me to distribute the reps there with Fajoko in and Leal out. Yeah, and maybe the other one that was kind of a question, James Daniel was going to miss a second straight game, so we will see her big start again at guard. Same with uh, um, Preston Harvin, more Brad yeah. Wing should be, you know, pretty yeah. standard there is a chance that so like if highsmith can't go then maybe we want to call somebody up from the practice squad um that would be david perales i assume and uh, i'm not sure if so they can call wing up they can call two players up they can't call three players up there's like a chance that that maybe like dan moore or, or firemuth ends up needing to go on injured reserve on saturday mm. because uh you know to, yeah. to make a roster spot we'll see uh something to keep an eye out for anyway yeah. All right. Well, let's start talking about this game. I, I want to just talk about how, you know, Steelers Ravens, I think the identity of this game has just been so well documented, but changes on the Ravens side, especially offensively, Todd Monken coming in as the offensive coordinator, pretty different offense uh, in terms of the one that he's typically run, you know, more of an air raid style in, in college at times and stuff like that. And how do you feel like, you know, Lamar Jackson is kind of settling into that offense? I feel like it's kind of been a little bit up and down, maybe not as many designed runs. He's still kind of adjusting to it, but last week he was awesome against Cleveland. Um, so where are you at with where that offense offenses i feel like they're doing a lot of like sideways high percentage stuff and lamar's never been like consistent at that stuff i he, like some people say he's not accurate and i think that's wrong like he's very accurate most of the time it's more about to me like just the consistency of his process and like seeing reads and, and things like that I feel like he has really elevated his game in this offense as a quarterback that is better able to take advantage of what the defense is giving him. You know, they were always a good running team. They always had that like deep passing threat that they would unravel a couple times. They always had Andrews who was so good over the middle and, and so dangerous against zone coverage and things like that. I think the piece they didn't have is that kind of like, Tom Brady style, like, if you're going to give me four yards, I'm going to take four yards from you all the time, like, kind of mentality. It, it isn't so much about unlocking his ability. I think he always could do it. I really think it's been about just a change in mentality for him where, like, every play does not need to be boom or bust, and they feel like they're much more willing to settle for shorter gains that are higher percentage throws and be a less risk averse offense or be a more risk averse offense. And I think that's uh, really what they needed. You know, I, if they can do that and continue to run the ball, I think they'll be pretty good. The hard part about watching this is we have not seen their three wide receivers together. You know, they've been injured. It looks yeah. like Eldo Beckham and uh, Rashad Bateman are going to be back for this game, which will give them the three receivers that they thought they were coming into the season with. But, it, you know, I mean, with respect to Nelson Aguilar and Devin DuVernay, those guys are not OBJ. Those guys, you know, like it's it's a little hard to look at what they've had and look at what they might have and kind of compare those two. And, and I don't think their running game has been as good this year as it has been in terms of Lamar's been fine, but in terms of the running back running, you know, that's usually been such a staple for them. And I know J.K. Dobbins mm -hmm. has hurt, but it seems like the Ravens have like 100 injuries every year and they still find a way to run the ball. This year, maybe they're not having as much success. So maybe that's kind of the thing they had to give up. Everything's about trade offs when you're trying to, to make changes in the NFL. Uh, so it's a very different Ravens offense than we've seen before. Not as much fullback, not as much two and three tight end. Um, much more like a kind of standard thing about the Cincinnati Bengals. Like going to be a lot of three wide receivers on the field kind of offense. 
Um, not that the Bengals don't run the ball because they do, but I, I think you're going to see just a lot more of like a more typical NFL offense and not like that weird Ravens offense that we're kind of used to seeing. Yeah, I mean, they were just actually Todd Monken was talking about it. He feels like on a play to play basis, it hasn't really been there in the run game to your point, but they have more explosive plays in the run game than he feels like they do in the passing game right now. And that's kind of the area that they're working on where they have been good, especially third down. They're sixth in the NFL in third down percentage. They've been able to move the chains. Uh, just quick glance at some other things. 26th in passing. They are fourth overall in rushing yards per game. But again, you know, that play to play basis, it really hasn't been there. 12th in points. Um, so yeah, I mean, again, it's kind of a different look for the Ravens offense, but relatively similar results overall. Yeah. I think the keys kind of just come out the same. Like you still want to stop the run and make them one dimensional. You still have to be wary of Lamar Jackson making plays on the edge and keeping contain on him. You know, the Steelers do such a good, good job against quarterbacks like him. They've, they've been one of the best teams in terms of defending Jackson specifically because their edge rushers are so good. And they have such high motor interior guys where, you know, mm-hmm. if you send those two edge guys up and, you know, you kind of, when they do that, they instruct those three techs, just hang back, just hang back, just kind of play patty cake. And so then if Lamar wants to try to take off in between an edge and a tackle, you know, the Steelers have always had athletic guys like Cam Hayward, you know, Larry Ogunjobi. I really feel like Monty Adams and Keanu Benton will fit right into that that mold mm-hmm. and, and be able to continue to just run him down and not let him get free and not let him escape. And um, it'll be a big game for this secondary linebacker group because they're going to have to find a way to cover flowers all over the field. He does a little bit of everything. Uh, Patrick Peterson called him a little munchkin today. Uh, he kind of, they like, yeah. like, I don't, think that's a dig they find ways to like right. hide him yeah. like they screen him they'll pop past him they they do the jet sweep him he'll, he'll get all the 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 wrinkles for this offense and and obj and, and bateman will kind of be your standard wide receivers and certainly obj can make bad coverage look silly he's still at this age he's not as explosive as he used to be but he can go up and get the ball as good as anyone. And so I, it, it really is an offense that I think in many ways is um, more challenging than what the Steelers have faced in the past with the Ravens because the Steelers had such a good scheme for what the Ravens were doing. Other teams really struggled with the Ravens last offense, but the Steelers weren't one of them. I think this will be um, a pretty significant challenge for them. And they've got to find a way to make some splash on that defense. We saw what happens last week when they didn't. Um, that that is the absolutely job number one for the Steelers on that side of the ball is to stop this Ravens rushing offense. It can be stopped and to get Lamar Jackson in some obvious passing situations. You let some guys pin their ears back, maybe take advantage of some inexperienced starting tackles. Although their first backup, Patrick McCarry is a very experienced veteran and you know, it, it isn't bad at all, but if it's Falele at the other spot, then that's definitely a guy they can take advantage of. Yeah, everybody. The last thing I want to bring up with the Ravens' offense against this defense is, you know, looking at everybody's looking at this receiving group versus our corners. Obviously, the corners have struggled quite a bit, um, secondary in general. But Mark Andrews, who you know, it, it, the last couple years has seen a lot of Terrell Edmonds on the other side. Terrell Edmonds obviously not here for the Pittsburgh Steelers. How do you feel like that matchup plays out? Like, is it going to be Demonte KZ? Is it going to be Keanu Neal? Do we see Quan Alexander or Cole Holcomb? Like, what are they going to do with Mark Andrews? I don't really know. I think it's going to be a lot of Keanu Neal, but we'll see. Um, it it really kind of depends on a couple things, right? Like if the Steelers are stopping the run without needing to put a safety in the box, then you can do some different things against the tight end in terms of like high low him. You can know, play a linebacker on him with a safety over the top. If you have to bring that third safety down to the box, then that means that safety is probably covering Andrews if it becomes a pass play, you know, roughly man to man. And so I think it's probably going to be split between like Neil, if he's the safety in the box and like maybe Cole Holcomb and Quan Alexander, if it's cover two and you have linebackers carrying the seam or, or playing in underneath zones, it, I, I feel like it's going to have to be a couple different people. And you know, the other thing is it's really to me, like the Steelers need the Ravens to feel like they have to help with Andrews on, on, you know, they, they need to get home with the pass rush and make them feel that so that Andrews is not able to free release all the time. That just makes covering him so much easier. 
Yeah, I, I'm, I'm interested to see how that plays out. Flipping the script here, Steelers offense versus Ravens defense. Um, we're going to be getting Marlon Humphrey back uh, for the, for the Ravens. Kyle Hamilton's a guy that just seems to keep getting better. It's interesting to watch the way that they used him. Just had three sacks a couple weeks ago against Indy. Plays a lot around the line of scrimmage. Plays some slot as well. Uh, we've mentioned, you know, Jadavian Clowney, who's actually looked a little bit better as a pass rusher this year, uh, as opposed to just being the run stopping edge that he's been. How do you feel like the Steelers offense matches up against the Ravens defense? Well, I mean, I don't think the Steelers offense should feel good about matching up against like yeah, against any defense. <laughs> Bishop Canavan, right? Like I don't know. <laughs> That's not a dig either. Like I just picked a random. Uh, yeah, Canavan's Bishop Canavan good. fans right now are going to be like Canavan's you actually me? pretty good right now. I think. Um, it, yeah, it's like there's. It's to me. It's this game for the Steelers offense is more about the Steelers offense than it is about matching up with the Ravens defense. I mean, I think Baltimore has some good players and they do some good things. Um, their linebackers are really the guys that you have to watch out for. I mean, to to take nothing away from from Hamilton and his play, and 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 obviously, you know, forty four is a great player on the on the outside. But to me, it starts with Roquan Smith and Patrick Queen, and if you can get those guys going the wrong direction, you know, we saw the Steelers do a lot of good work with the trap runs against Houston. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not loving that matchup here when you're talking about getting linemen to climb to the second level, try to block those guys. I think that's going to be a little more difficult. This feels like a game where you lean on the jet, a game where you use some counters, a game where you use some draws, try to get those guys moving one way screen game and, and, and go back against them. The, the grain the other way will be key. And this, you know, how healthy is Kenny Pickett? Can they keep him upright in the pocket? Like, look, this offensive line has to play better. Like, they have just not been good enough this year. Um, they're not living up to their own expectations. Uh, they're certainly not living up to as good as I thought they could be. It's going to be tough with two, you know, guys that are not elite pass protectors in there in terms of Broderick Jones and and Nate Herbig. Like, that's not what those guys are best at. So, if I'm the Steelers' offense, I'm trying to feed Najee early and often. I think he's a guy that can wear people down. Um, you know, and, and have Jalen Warren as that change of pace. Like I, if I'm the Steelers offense, I'm building like a, an option playbook for this game. Like I, I don't want to throw the ball unless I have to throw the ball, not because I don't trust Kenny Pickett and because I don't think that he can do it, but I just, it just feels like that is the thing that the Steelers have a chance of being good at. Like if you think back to that Ravens game last year, that is what they did to win that game was run the ball. And I, I feel like that's going to have to be it again. Um, I'd be coming out in this first drive and calling runs until they stop me. I, I really think that's that's how. If I'm Matt Canada, my script is the ten best runs I've got, and maybe we'll run some of them twice. Like that's that's really what I'm trying to do with this game is establish some physicality, get some 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 momentum, some consistency, and and I just think that is the place they can win. Like this Ravens defensive line and the interior is not as good as it's been. Um, big guy, you know, uh, Clay's Campbell, not there anymore. Um, you know, it, it's, I think, and, and we talked about their lack of depth on the edge. I think this is the team that the Steelers can run the ball against and it, it will be the closest and the fastest way for them finding some good feelings about this offense, about themselves. Like, man, I'm like, I'm like trap power jet, like over and over yeah. again. Like just just keep running it. That that's that's how I see the Steelers' uh, best chance of winning this game. And then dial up some play action. You know, get those guys moving forward and see if you can get George Pickens one on one a little bit and throw up some 50-50 balls. Like I, I feel like that's the way forward for this offense because even I, I don't know how they can feel good about their passing offense right now. I just I just don't. No, at a glance, the Ravens defense right now third in total yards, third in passing yards, seventh in rushing yards third in points 18th though uh in terms of third down percentage um again though you know we've talked about how they're a little bit thin on the edge right now uh also yeah you look at the interior of that defense two young players and travis jones and justin matabike and then they brought michael pierce back those are really the three that have kind of been playing within that interior the defensive line so i, I think that's a matchup to watch too i was going to bring that up if you didn't bring up the interior with the changing you know of calais campbell long time uh, player there for them, no longer there. Be interesting to see how Mason Cole, Isaac Sayamalo, and uh, Herbig, not James Daniels, are going to fare against those guys. Um, what about in terms of the Steelers' tight end utilization? Like, without Pat Fryermuth, 
how do we feel like that goes? Like, are we going to see that? Like, is it is it a wide receiver? Maybe do we see four receivers, or do we see Darnell actually running some routes, or does Hot Rod actually play a role on Sunday? Yeah, I think you're going to see a little bit more two back. Okay, that would be my my that we've okay. seen so far. Get Jalen and Najee on the field together. To me, that is right now without Pat Farmuth. If I'm like, who are the best five eligibles the Steelers have? To me, it's Pickens, Robinson. Harris, Warren, and Austin. Like that, those would be my five. Uh, obviously, you can't play like that all the time, but I think that mm -hmm. makes the most sense is to get those guys on there. And you can flip Connor Hayward in there a good bit, right? Because he could play as a second running back. He can play as a fullback. He can play as a tight end. He can do a lot of different things. If they want a tight end with his hand on the ground. It's going to be Darnell Washington. There's no question about that to me. Uh, he should play a lot in this game. Do not count out Rodney Williams, man. He is a good player. He is not a scrub off the practice squad. Rodney Williams, if you can find a betting line on the over for Rodney Will Rodney Williams receiving yards, take it to the bank. I'm telling you, he's. I wonder if I can. He's 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 a good player. They are going to be like, who the hell is 87? And he's going to be, and you're going to be like, who the hell is 87? I'm telling you, like he can play. Uh, if they give him a chance, he can make an impact. Uh, I don't think more wide receivers is the answer to me. I don't really love anybody after 19 on that depth chart. Um, I think it's it's more of, you know, Hayward. It's more Williams. It's more Warren. Um, maybe we see a little bit of Godwin Iguibuke in the offense in this game too, um, j just because we, we haven't so far. But yeah, mm -hmm. I, I mean, it's uh, and like we've talked talked on this a little bit, but man, like this is a banged up team. Like they've got to find a way to play yeah. a road game at home. I think that's a. Uh, that, that's the way, like, I, I take the air out of the ball. Make this a short possession game. And, like, look, this crowd could get hostile. Uh, yeah, I, like, let's be real. Uh, like, for both, towards both teams. Yeah, They're going to get booed if they're three and out on the first drive. Like, Absolutely. No question. No question. Mm -hmm. And so uh, they've got to keep their own. Like, usually you run the ball to keep the road fans out of it. They've got to keep their own fans into it. They've got to find a way to keep the crowd from turning on them in this game to have some semblance of home field advantage. Like I was I did a story today on Geno stone, who's from Newcastle mm -hmm. is uh, has been starting at safety for the Ravens. Although I don't believe he will start this week. Uh, and he, somebody asked him like, Oh, what's it going to be like when they play renegade? And I'm like, they, they may not be playing. Renegade. <laughs> like, the, like the crowd may be a, like, I'm just picturing like a, 28 to three score in the fourth quarter with like 90% yellow seats. And the ones that are there have their bags on their head. I'm like, we may, you got the car way before the horse there. If you're worried about what's happening, how the Ravens are going to respond to renegade. Like that's way down the list of concerns for, uh, for this game right now. The, the worst time that I can remember, at least in recent memory, them playing renegade, they played renegade when the Patriots were kneeling the clock out in the opener last year. They were up by two possessions. They were kneeling the ball and they played Renegade. Do you remember that? No, I don't. Really? I was okay. not at that game. Oh, um, um, okay. Must have been before my time covering the Steelers. Was it about, about 18, maybe? No, no, no. La last year's against the Patriots. Oh, last year? Was I not yeah. there? Man, when they I... were like running the clock out and then they, they got a first down that iced the game and just started kneeling and they, they played Renegade. Oh, wow. I don't remember that. Really weird. Yeah. yeah, that is weird. Um, all right, prediction time for Sunday's game against the Ravens. You know, I think this has been a game that the Steelers would find a way to win. Um, playing the Ravens, they've had a lot of success against the Ravens compared to how good the teams have been. Um, mm -hmm. Mike Tomlin has responded really well to big losses in his career. Uh, we talked about that after the San Francisco game. They bounce back and get a win against the Browns in the division. This feels like a game that the Steelers under Mike Tomlin have found a way to win. However, I just don't know if I feel that energy with this team right now. I, 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 I'll say this, like, they really need to win this game and it, it needs to be, uh, it, it, I mean, they need to win. Like it, it, this is an important game. And I don't know. I feel like this, if this is going to be another team that continues to play 
Steeler football and, and looks like the Mike Tomlin teams that we're familiar with, good or bad, this has to be a win. I, I just, I'll be honest, I don't know how much I'm feeling it. Like, I, I don't get that sense of urgency from this team right now, that sense of like what this game means that, that I feel like I should. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll put faith in Mike Tomlin's ability to, to motivate the, his team and find a way to win a game that people have general when people have generally written his team off because that is one of the things that he is the very best at. Um, mm-hmm. So I'll say the Steelers find a win a way a way to win an ugly close game, say nineteen sixteen, eighteen sixteen. I don't know somewhere in there. That's that's what I'm going with. I'm happy that you are because I am not. Uh, I've been consistent with my pick throughout the week. Appeared on a couple other podcasts. I got the Ravens in this one. I don't think this. I think the Steelers find a little bit of something offensively. Um, I just feel like there is that type of while there's not that type of energy surrounding this team and that this game specifically, like you're mentioning, I feel like Najee's comments about the players executing gives me a little bit of something. And I feel like the players respond a little bit to that. Uh, so I got 26, 21 Ravens win this one on Sunday. Um, I almost feel like they're going to, we're going to feel better about this loss than we did that Browns win. Like if they lose, and they score 20 points. They score like three touchdowns offensively. And mm-hmm. Kenny looks good. And maybe they like can't run the ball very well or like they can't stop the. I, I don't know. Like I think, I think Kenny Pickett's play to me means a, almost as much as a win in this one in terms of how you feel about this team going forward. Pickett goes out and throws for 300 yards and, and three touchdowns and they lose. I think you kind of take that. Um, I don't see that happening though. Like, I think that's far less likely. Than the uh, yeah. Part. I mean, I think, you know, like, I think that is like the, the least likely of all the outcomes to me. Like, I think the Steelers need to hope for a low possession game, kick a bunch of field goals. Like Chris I think they're going to run the ball. Well, that's kind of my they prediction. Run the they run the ball. Like, well. They have to run the ball and, and, and they should be able to run the ball against this defense. I, I really, I really think that. Now Baltimore's going to come out with eight guys in the box, I'm sure, but they've got to find a way to run it anyway. And I, I think they will be able to. Um, we'll, we'll see. I mean, I, I, I'm still. I, 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 this is mostly just a pick for Mike Tomlin because I think that this is what he does well. Um, yeah, and he has won a million games when people had all but written him and his team off. And this feels like that. I like what you said about Najee Harris's comments and and being a motivator. I have felt that from the team that, that that's been a, that there's been a, a sort of galvanization of like, Hey guys, you know, this is, you know, these guys all think it's the coach. I'm like, we're all, we all know we're all playing like crap. I'm like, we need to do better. And, and I feel that, so we'll see. I don't know. I am not a very confident uh, pick this week, but I will pick the Steelers no. to win a close, ugly, low-scoring football game. There we go. In the comments, we want to know what you guys think as well for Sunday's game. Let us hear your predictions. Also, just stuff throughout the week. Let us know what you want to see us talk about during Monday's episode when we come back after the weekend. But until then, Alan, tell the people where they can find you. At a Saunders underscore PGH on X at PGH Steelers now is the site's account. Steelersnow.com is where my words live. Read those so I can get paid. Sign up for Steelers Now Plus. Oh man, you got it. D- Derek Bell's breakdown of this matchup: Steelers versus Ravens. Um, mm-hmm. As good as it gets, I'm telling you. As good as it gets, uh, check it out. Well, dude, that article is worth the uh, the the price and 10 percent off my promo code Allen 10. Uh, you get that. We're also giving stuff away when we get to 10,000 subscribers on YouTube, which should be like right now. It should be there already. It should I've be got, after this look, episode. Look, yep. look at this free. This is a sneak preview. Look, we got some socks. Okay. Some like mm-hmm. cool ass. I got a hat. I got a jersey that is not. Hmm. Where will I go here today? That is not. I'm now forgetting who I've already said it's not. It is not Cam Hayward or Larry Ogunjobi. Okay, I don't think that you said those two. So okay, okay. let's not. check. But more there boxes. is jersey. There's some beef jerky. There's a hat. We've got all kinds of stuff. We've got all kinds of stuff. We're giving it all away, and we're gonna play our full rocking version of our theme song and just have a little party. 
which might be like a wake if uh, if the Steelers lose this game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we'll see how the weekend goes. But we fully expect when we come back on Monday, we will, we will be at that 10,000 subscriber mark. So get us to it. We appreciate you guys. If you're listening somewhere else other than YouTube, be sure to leave us a five-star review there as well. Like, subscribe, hit that notification bell if you are watching here. I'm Zachary Smith, PGH for Alan Saunders and myself. We will see you after the weekend to talk about Steelers-Ravens, positively or negatively. Until then, thanks for jumping in and to take another ride on the Steelers Afternoon Drive. We'll